Thank you so much, David. And thank you so much for joining us for the last session before drinks. So we appreciate that we are between you and the drinks. And I promise that this is going to be great and interesting. And we tried to get Tina to just bring drinks in here, and she said no. <laughs> Uh, I would also like to add, uh, so I'm joined today by the lovely Melody Moore, um, who is doing research development at uh, UTMB, Uni University Texas Medical Branch. Catherine Swan also contributed, who is a director of research development at the University of Montana. She also contributed to this presentation, but unfortunately she couldn't travel, so I will be covering uh, her part as well. So let's get into it. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the basics, what funding institutional is in case you haven't heard about it, and what we did around sorting funding uh, into trending research areas. And then I'm going to tell you about uh, University of Montana, how they leverage uh, these trending research areas and align them with their pure portal. And then I will hand it over to Melody, who's going to share how UTMB uses them. All right, so something that we all probably know is that all research activities need to be funded by someone. And funding applications take a lot of time. They pull researchers away from time otherwise spent on the real mission, which is conducting research. But we can help you. So with Funding Institutional, that is an extensive funding database that is designed for researchers and institutions to help them find funding efficiently. So we help in the discovery processes by aggregating over 45,000 funding opportunities from more than 16,000 funders. We provide insights through our awarded grants database, including more than 9 million awarded grants. And all these information taken together can help you make informed decisions and see where you should spend your time and where you should look for something else, maybe. So what we did last year, we introduced the so-called trending research areas in Funding Institutional. So we have um, sorted the funding data by global challenges like the sustainable development goals and also other themes like uh, artificial intelligence, quantum research, and so on. And we did this building on Elsevier's analytical uh, reports. So they, these, for these analytical reports, our data science teams developed uh, search queries to assign uh, papers, actually publications, to these different teams. We took this methodology, we, make it, we made it work for uh, funding data, to ultimately to help researchers and institutions find uh, relevant funding even quicker. Now, we took this a step further uh, this year, and we made it possible for institutions to customize uh, this trending research area section in Funding Institutional. So institutional admins and editors can publish uh, customized, search, customized searches as institutional research area. So these will also appear on the start page of the tool. So whenever a researcher logs in uh, from their institution, they can see what really matters to the institution. And what is also important is that, yeah, it, these are exclusively visible to the researchers of the institution. So if you publish one at UTMB, that's not going to be seen at uh, Montana. So let's see how this works at uh, the University of Montana. So covering for Catherine uh, this part. Montana is a dynamically growing institution, and they have great research development services. They provide uh, agile, strategic services supporting research, creative, and uh, scholarly pursuits with the ultimate goal to increase funding competitiveness. They also provide uh, short-term support in response to project ideas, but also long-term support based on uh, funding trends and areas of excellence. And they also are doing a lot of researcher engagement through one-on-ones, proposal development, but also they host uh, grant writing workshops and other trainings, including uh, walkthroughs of uh, pure and funding institutional. 
So UAM is really dedicated to societally relevant research contributing to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal with an outstanding contribution uh, to life on land and climate action, even in the global landscape. But of course, SDGs can be pretty wide, and we talked about uh, importance of regional contribution already at the keynote on the first day, so that's what UTMB also does, and what they did, they implemented PURE, they launched their portal called UM Impact, and they, besides highlighting their DSDGs, they are also highlighted that they are very committed to improving health outcomes for their communities. So we took all these strategic, uh, strategically important areas that they highlight on their UM impact and translated them into funding institutional, uh, the institutional research areas. So now when uh, UM's researchers come into funding institutional, and they are faced with this huge amount of funding data, they have somewhere to start from. So it really helps with uh, UM's researcher engagement. And with that, I hand over to Melody, Thank and you. she will tell you about UTMB. So many of you I've seen in other sessions, you know who we are, where we are. And, um, but what you don't know is about our research. I am so excited about UTMB research because we not only operate in Galveston and in Houston, we operate 43 cities across Texas. We off operate in ev almost every state um, collaboratively across the U.S. All seven continents, so Patrick is not in here, but Pure is on all seven continents. He just didn't know that. And we even have experiment, we even have research going on on the International Space Station. So Pure is not only in all seven continents, they're, on, and they're in space too. So next time you see Patrick telling that. Um, but this is our research. We are not just located in Southeast Texas. We are all over. And so um, ha being that global, however, you guys have heard me say, we do not use the SDG goals. We just don't use them. Nobody in Texas does, and it, they haven't caught on. So in 2019, they started our strategic research plan and with these six health communities. And so I said, well, we're going to base everything around that funding. We're going to look for funding based on these. We're going to put it on pure. And this has kind of been my driving force for the last six years. And um, we created badges, which identifies their, they show up on our peer portal. We also have the fundamental science group, which is the catch-all group where the others don't fit in. We have two researchers in there, so that's not a huge group. But how did I make this um, work in funding institutional? Well, all of those, all, if you go back a couple of slides, you're going to see all of these keywords underneath the research plan. They, they relate to the, to, the, to the health community. So I couldn't search by all those keywords, but what I can do is put it in a search within funding institutional, bring them in and put it, put it in a trending research area. So it is now on our page. And how did we do it? I put it in Excel, figured out all the fingerprint words, also all the keywords, matched them with the health communities, and used the fingerprint web service extraction tool with a little help from my friend, and um, pulled them out, and then we had a, a search engine. So she's going to tell you how, how this came up, we came up with all of this. Yeah, we actually uh, also explored a second method here, and I also love UTMB research. So we uh, experimented a bit with uh, the brain health area, and Melody provided me with their, the list of their brain health experts from Pure, and then we put that into Pure, and the nice thing was also that we could see the publications also that were beyond UTMB, so the entire expertise of uh, the brain health researchers. We fingerprinted uh, their output and we used that as an inspiration for the keyword searches for funding. So we could really go beyond uh, those defined keywords that, uh, that were also put up on the on the portal, and we could really expand into the real expertise of the researchers uh, who work at UTMB to really show them funding easily that is relevant to them. And I want to add one more thing before you skip to the next slide. So we had we have new leadership in. Somebody wanted to use something besides funding institutional. I don't. Who in this room is using funding institutional besides us? Anyone? 
Diego. So I'm going to tell you. Diego, if, you do, by the way. If you're not using it, you really ought to consider it. Um, we had, like I said, new leadership came in. They wanted to use a, a competing product. And so it fell to me to, um, and then we have, we have InfoEd, which comes free with spin. So it fell to me to defend my product here. And so I did a deep dive in with the six health communities. I looked at all of them to see who had the most funding. And funding institutional across the board was the clear winner, like 10 times more funding opportunities than Pivot. I'll tell the name, Pivot or Spin. So if you're looking for a funding database, I'm not here to sell you. I'm just going to tell you I've already done the research. You got it here. So, and she, she didn't know I was going to say that, but um, I, I just want to tell you it, it's a great funding database and has helped us a lot. Thank you very much, Melody. It's a pleasure. It's been a pleasure working together on this, uh, on this project, and we are happy to ex uh, accept the questions. We're good, but surely you have a question. Now everybody's thinking about wine and cheese. That's right. And hamon, probably. <laughs> Anyone has a comment or question? So how successful have you been in the applications using funding? So we have been really successful in the applications. What I've done is funding institutional allows you to go in and I have private one-on-one -on -one meetings. Or I did. I'm now taking on a new role and someone else is doing funding. But um, I would have private one-on-one -on -one meetings with, with professors set up an, an automatic email that went to them and went to me. And then um, even in my current role, whenever that email comes across, I just email it to them and say, here's some new funding opportunities. Remember to check your funding institutional profile. And so even though... There's no direct correlation. We don't link it and say this came from Funding Institutional. I know for a fact that my people are, are using it because our numbers have been fabulous. And um, so they're using it and our, our grant numbers are going up. And I can, look at, I can look, at the, look at the sponsors and know which ones I sent, but it's not, we don't have any direct relationship data. Yes. Isn't there a song like that, David? Can you sing it for uh, us? Do you think that funding institutional is uh, sufficiently integrated in Pure, or we should do more? Um, you can always do more. I do not have. I do not have the award. If you have the award data, it's, I hear it's a lot easier. I do not have that award module, but um, but it was fairly easy to to match, mix and match with the fingerprints. And I hear that the next iteration, the fingerprints are going to be searchable in a report, which they're not currently right now, but they are in the next upgrade. And that will make it so much easier because you can just pull, the, pull them out. You don't have to go through the Excel sheet like I did. And then you can upload them as a string in Funding Institutional and come out with great funding opportunities. Do you use those right We use InfoEd. That's what we use. Um, and the person who manages InfoEd loves InfoEd as much as I love my Elsevier product. So we will always use InfoEd. So, you, are you trying to integrate? Are you trying to integrate funding institutional with InfoEd or? There was a suggestion on that. Um, InfoEd doesn't like to play nice with Elsevier, so <laughs> um, they it didn't go very far. Any other questions? Uh, Sophia, can you just talk a bit about how the coverage of funding institutional and how you're growing that? Uh, because uh, I think that's a real interest to a lot of our European clients. Are we growing uh, the sources for funding institutional? Yes, so we do two things. Uh, we do proactively grow the database, and one significant step forward last year, we partnered with uh, Grant Forward. Uh, that really helped us increase our coverage down to the level of small, extra small foundations and nonprofits uh, in the North American region. But besides that, uh, we have also included new funders, a lot from Denmark, actually. So a lot of uh, the small foundations were included uh, from Denmark, and we've also made improvements in the UK. So we do a lot of proactive stuff, and besides that, we are always open uh, for suggestions. So if um, a customer comes to us and says like, oh, actually there is this one funder I haven't found 
in the database and we would like to find everything in one place, uh, we're always open uh, for these suggestions. So since last year, actually, our funding opportunity coverage grew by almost 50%. Yeah. So there is good stuff happening. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right. Thank I you. think we really appreciate our uh, attention, especially being between the last you one. and wine. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.